My viewpoint has kind of evolved in terms of, you know, how I think about the opportunity set. So uh, let me start by giving a background of what Bloomberg Intelligence is. For those who don't know, we are a team of about 400 people uh, within the Bloomberg umbrella. We do our own research. We have models on companies. And what we try to do is to give uh, our investor base and the terminal users, uh, you know, a bottom-up perspective, fundamental analysis on companies and research, and uh, Metaverse being an opportunity that ties closely with companies like Meta, Apple, and you know all the large tech names. So, uh, what I'll try to do here is to really help you kind of get a feel for how we are thinking about the opportunity set and how we are sizing this opportunity more importantly. Um, so when, uh, you know, when I gave this presentation back in April, and it uh, was in Boston as well, uh, there were a number of definitions and forecasts that I have come across you know, from uh, trillions of dollars, $5 trillion, to you know, even more than that. And, the underlying assumption that everyone is making when they're coming up with trillion dollar forecasts for metaverse is internet is the metaverse. You know, all, everything that we do on the internet can be moved to this uh, abstract term called metaverse, which can drive a lot of, you know, uh, 3D immersive experiences. And uh, I think even though I notionally agree with that definition, I do think when investors are looking at metaverse, they're more focused on the incremental opportunity. What is it that virtual reality or augmented reality or you know, a new form of 3D experience can enable? And that is where uh, we have highlighted three revenue categories that could be uh, you know, $100 billion type of opportunities by 2030. They're still relatively small, as you can see on the chart. But the more important thing is, this is how the companies that are thinking of this concept or you know, are coming up with uh, ways to monetize this new concept are uh, focusing on. So we are AR hardware. We know uh, Facebook or Meta has made a big push. Oculus, in fact, last year, they did sell about 10 million units. And I will show a comparison in terms of where it stacks up against you know, some of the other categories like variables, for example. And then uh, the AR, VR uh, software spending, that's really the next iteration of chat software, if you want to think it that way, or you know, anything else that revolves around creating those 3D immersive experiences. And my approach uh, when I look at the software opportunity isn't that avatar centric as Meta has laid out to be. So their big focus is, you know, we are gonna be doing our conferences and chats with avatars. I, I think it can be more than that. And, and avatars, use of avatars is just one example of what an immersive experience can look like. So software definitely is a big opportunity. And the third one, which is established at this point of time is the token base or you can call it the digital currency version of how an ecosystem can monetize the time spent. So Roblox is the most notable example where they've created their own currency, Roblox. And uh, you know, even though it appeals more to the, uh, like the younger demographic, the nine to 15 year olds, but they've been able to monetize it pretty well in terms of, you know, uh, people spending their dollars, converting it to uh, a Roblox currency, and then spending that currency on the platform. So that is another way we think this concept of metaverse can be monetized. Um, then I, I mentioned about units. So this is very illustrative because you can see how uh, you know all these different categories have evolved. So smartphones, for example, is like around 1.6 billion units. PCs, 350 million. And when you compare that to VR and AR, VR was 11 million units. The good thing for VR and AR as a hardware category is, look, the price point is close to you know some of the other categories like tablets or uh, variables. So. Uh, as long as you know the price point keeps going down or it stays around this level, 
the unit base will expand. AR, on the other hand, is still quite expensive, which is why you see the number of units is still uh, uh, negligible. Um, and then smart speakers uh, is another category that has become quite popular. And uh, you know it's done quite well simply because the price point is uh, uh, that low. So our view is, you know, the VR Air hardware category may bundle some of that functionality that your watch offers or your the smart speaker offers, and that's where it can be more, uh, you know, mainstream in terms of uh, people actually buying these uh, for not just the gaming experiences, but something more than that. Um, this is another kind of snapshot of the market share, and you can see how Apple has created a new category in wearables. It's a leading vendor on the smart speaker side. Amazon and Google have actually done quite well. And then on the AR and VR side, uh, I mean, AR is still very small, but uh, Microsoft uh, definitely with HoloLens is a leading vendor, and uh, Meta, we know, uh, is the leading vendor when it comes to the VR experiences. So. When you're thinking about metaverse, it's important to think of the time spent across categories. And uh, you can see right now, you know, social networks clearly have the uh, largest install base, three to four billion users, spending on average, you know, 50 minutes per day. Uh, video platforms uh, have become quite popular from TikTok to YouTube, and they are uh, kind of gaining market share in terms of time spent. At the end of the day, you know, users have only so much time to spend on, you know, Netflix or social media. And so you, when you're thinking about metaverse, you have to think in terms of the overall time spent. And, and that's why I think it's important to look at gaming as a category, because right now, gaming is the biggest use case for, you know, VR and AR. And, and it will evolve over time, as I said, chats could have a, a more immersive experience, but gaming is a good comparison because you can see how much uh, time people are spending on gaming, and that continues to grow because of uh, you know, the uh, pivot towards VR and AR. Um, this is another data point around uh, you know, virtual worlds, as Roblox likes to call it, and you can see that time spent is growing because people, especially in the younger demographic, they find that 3D experience to be appealing. So you can expect, you know, there will be more virtual worlds uh, where if for a particular type of use case or a game, it, it makes a ton of sense for users to spend some time simulate in, in simulation and just kind of going through the opportunity in terms of learning or, you know, Education could be a big use case. So you could see similar, uh, you know, metaverses. I mean, I don't think there will be one metaverse. There will be industrial metaverse. There could be an education metaverse. And that is the way to think about, you know, the time spent and how it could shake out. Um, I wanted to uh, bring this up because when you look at monetization, right now, uh, majority of the app store sales are driven by gaming. A lot of the companies use the mobile operating system or the app stores to sell their games. And uh, you know the app stores uh, take 25 to 30% of whatever uh, the, uh, the users are spending. So that's a take rate for the platform. And that has caused a big shift from the consoles to the mobile operating system or the app stores. We think similarly, uh, you know, you will see a shift towards VR and AR, although not of this magnitude where, you know, mobile uh, app stores have taken almost, uh, I would say, uh, mobile app stores make up like 70% of the gaming revenue. So you're not going to see that kind of shift, uh, at least in the next three, four years, but clearly there will be like a platform shift uh, when it comes to gaming. And, and this is another data point around how gaming monetizes so much better than uh, social media. So you can see the average revenue per daily active user is much higher for uh, gaming compared to social media, although social media has a much larger base. So clearly, once you have a platform and you have engaged users, as Roblox has, you can monetize it using uh, currency 
and you can monetize it uh, using ads, which is what Roblox is doing now. So monetization happens uh, fairly quickly once you have you know, users who are engaged, and, and all these experiences are quite immersive. So that way, you're not going to you know, uh, have people log into the platform and then uh, you know, come, come out of it quickly, because you will end up spending a, a few minutes uh, every time you log into the platform. Um, this is a survey that we did in terms of uh, you know, how uh, VR and AR is a gateway to the metaverse. And again, the major use case is still gaming. Although with meta really kind of making this big pivot, you can expect the social media uh, apps will have a lot more of VR and AR type of experience, where if you are looking at your feed and if you're using a VR or, or an AR device, you will have a much more engaging experience, uh, even if you are consuming a photo or a video. And so uh, e-commerce is another kind of use case that is emerging more and more. A lot of these apps and websites do have a 3D kind of uh, aspect to it. And if you are using this enhanced uh, virtual reality or augmented reality headset, it will give you a different experience, more immersive. So clearly, uh, VR and AR uh, is being used more and more. The one uh, kind of uh, drawback that we are seeing is uh, you will have you know, uh, content issues when it comes to uh, AR and VR. And I have another slide after this where it shows you that even though the VR and uh, AR headsets have been around for about five years and Meta launched their version of the App Store back in 2018, they haven't been able to grow the content very well. And there is still limited availability of content. So that's where the video game ecosystem comes into play. There are all these gaming publishers. And then uh, what uh, Microsoft is doing, for example, by buying Activision is really bringing in a lot of that gaming content. Because how do you create these 3D experiences? You need some sort of an anchor point in terms of what is out there that is kind of a 3D uh, version of what people like to uh, kind of use in, in those experiences. And, and so the gaming publishers are very good in terms of content. Disney, for example, also has a lot of content that they could leverage for building their own metaverse. Um, so this is the comparison, uh, as I was alluding to. Apple App Store was launched in 2007, and you can see uh, the number of installed devices in the first three years were 115 million. Uh, contrast that with Meta, it's still a very small install base. And the number of apps uh, at the three-year mark was over 250,000 for uh, Apple. It's around 1,000 for Meta. So clearly, things have been slow in terms of you know, the adoption. And we know that. And, and uh, it may very well take more time because uh, when you think about the VR form factor, people can only use it for half an hour, you know, and, and uh, they're still, the headset is heavy, so the form factor needs to evolve, as well as the content needs to grow. Um, uh, one area where we feel extremely positive on the software side is just the 3D design software. Even if you're not going to see, you know, uh, a big adoption curve, companies are investing in those 3D uh, experiences. And that's where software will be one of the fastest growing categories. And uh, especially the software tools that enable the 3D design, like an Autodesk or you know, uh, Procore um, and Ansys, they, they will uh, be in high demand because you are using those for simulation and design. Um, I'll quickly go through uh, the use cases, but you can go through the slides later on as well. Um, look, I, I think for these 3D experiences, uh, you need the connectivity. And that's where you know companies like Verizon, AT&T, they will uh, clearly uh, require, uh, I mean, uh, Meta has to partner with them because they can't uh, enable the connectivity. So for the 3D experiences, you need the connectivity. And that will drive a lot more use cases. Gaming adoption will continue to grow, and uh, that's something we are seeing already in the data. But as uh, the device gets better, you will see more of that. Um, there are other use cases as well that you can see on the slide. But uh, 
e-commerce, we think that will evolve as well, as I was alluding to, the websites and app will have a 3D element. And the factory floor monitoring, it's much more engaging with this kind of a user experience where you can see everything on the screen as opposed to you know, trying to figure out where the issues are. And, uh, and VR and AR can enable that. Um, digital twins is emerging as a big concept. More of the industrial companies are investing in it, and that really is a replica of how your uh, factory is set up so that you can have a digital twin to monitor, uh, you know, something like that. Um, so these are the top metaverse players by different categories. You can see that, you know, on the application side, Roblox, Microsoft, and 3D design software, as I was mentioning, and then semiconductors, that will be huge to enable a lot of these experiences and connectivity as I referenced earlier. So here are my key takeaways that VR and AR uh, glasses are the gateway to the metaverse, even though the term is used quite loosely. Um, and uh, you know, cloud and edge will enable uh, a lot of the data to be translated into insights. And uh, AI, look, uh, right now social media is all personalized, so AI will have a big play in terms of driving the experiences on the metaverse, and everyone will have their customized feed, albeit it will be more uh, 3D immersive, and a lot of the boring tasks will be automated as a result of the advancements that we are making on the metaverse. So I will be around if anyone has any questions, happy to answer that, but uh, thank you all for listening.